Missions Pulse. Know God's heart, join his mission. I can remember being in Napa Valley, kind of one of the most prominent wine regions of the United States. I was there together with my wife and we were walking in an area. It was during a very dry season around 2013. Forest fires like now were bursting out everywhere in that area of California. And I remember telling my wife, this will be a horrible year for wine. (laughs) And the winemaker that I was walking around with turned around, looked at me very sharply and said, why would you say that? I said, well, because there's no rain. He's like, that's actually a good environment for wine. And I thought, no, that can't be possible. I grew up on a farm. I grew up in a rural area. And every plant, no matter if it's grapes or it's corn, it needs water. It needs water to make it work. Yes. And he said, grapes that are made for wine are different. Hmm. And he said this, and it will stick with me forever. And I love how the Bible often uses the vine and wine and it, as kind of a representation of different ideas of, of what takes place in heaven so that we can understand them on earth. And he said this, I, I will never forget it. He said, if a grapevine has too much water, too much nutrients, too good of soil, they produce what's called lazy grapes. I thought, lazy grapes? <laughs> what kind of word? I've never even heard of lazy grapes before. He said, uh, he said, lazy grapes are good for selling in the store, but they can never be used to make wine. You see, the reason why Napa Valley is so well known inside of uh, the U.S. as being one of the best regions in the world for growing wine is because it's on volcanic ash. And if you want to have a good uh, vine that grows grapes for winemaking, the winemaker needs, get this, the winemaker needs the vine to struggle. So they plant the vines on purpose in areas that do not have good nutrients, because if these vines have too much water, too much nutrients, too much sunshine, what they do is they create these big, beautiful leaves that uh, look good, but they have no value for the vine itself. They make these big, luscious, round fruits of grapes, but they they have no flavor. It's only water inside of these, these bunches of grapes. but If the vine struggles to get nutrients, what happens is it's forced to send its roots deeper into the ground. And every time the vine roots break through new ground, they bring about new flavor from different layers in the soil. That's why you hear winemakers say, oh, I can taste strawberries. I can taste leather. I can, you know, you hear all of these, these weird uh, ways of these descriptive terms like, OK, did they add those flavors to wine? Like, how did those flavors get in there? They got in there because when the vine was struggling to get nutrients, it went through different layers and it gave a complexity. And because the the vine has very little resources, it puts nothing really into making beautiful leaves. Instead, it uses all of its energy to put uh, juice into the fruit. And it's that fruit that becomes valuable to the winemaker. The winemaker is then able to make some of the most beautiful, wonderful, most cherished wine from vines that go through a struggle. And so I think sometimes... We in the West can be like lazy grapes, but the the flavors that are coming out of the persecuted church, the wine that is coming forth from the persecuted church, it may not look beautiful. They may not be taking place in these wonderful buildings, these- these With fog machines and laser lights. Exactly. But there is a purity. There is an innocence. There is a beauty- that is there, and I believe that the winemaker is pleased with the flavors that he is getting from these vines. Missions Pulse. Know God's heart, join his mission. This podcast is powered by Within Reach Global. Subscribe, watch, and listen on YouTube today. Visit missionspulse.com.